Hello everybody. This video is to explain our major project in the computer science department of Gokaraju Rangaraju Institute of Engineering and Technology. We have done a major project on document clustering using K-Mediaids algorithm. The hardware and software requirements for this project are as follows. The RAM and processor is our regular RAM and processor can be used and any OS can be used. Clustering basically is a data mining technique in which data elements can be placed together into related groups. In different types of clustering has been proposed like partitioning techniques, hierarchical clustering, etc. Partitioning methods are most popular among all these methods available for clustering. The document clustering or text clustering is the first kind of clustering in which the different text documents are placed together into related groups. Before clustering, the data set is prepared that is pre-processed by applying tokenization, stopword removal and stemming steps. Apart from this, pruning can also be applied as a pre-processing step. In the tokenization, the words are broken down into simple words and phrases. For example, in this example.txt file, we see that all the words are individually extracted. The next step is stopword removal, where the small words which do not make any difference to the content of the text are removed, such as a, b, been, as, etc. The standard wordlist.txt is used, which is downloaded from the internet for this purpose. Here, as we can see, stop words have been removed. The third step for pre-processing is stemming, where the root word of the word is considered. That is, any the morphological form of the words are removed. Here, Porter stemmer, which is the basic classic algorithm for stemming, has been used in order to perform the stemming step. The next step is to construct the term frequency matrix. The term frequency matrix is a term document matrix where the rows represent the number of documents and the columns represent the number of words. The following example indicates how a term frequency matrix can be created, where the entries represent the number of times that word occurs in the particular document. For example, I, the TF-IDF matrix on the other hand is the term frequency inverse document frequency matrix where it is used as a weighting factor in information retrieval and text mining. Now here, the following formula can be used in order to attain the term frequency IDF matrix directly from the TF matrix itself. To begin the clustering process, first the distance measures that have to be used have to be decided. The following four distance measures have been used in our project, namely cosine measure, Euclidean distance, jacquard coefficient and PCC. The initial centroids are determined by using one of these six techniques in our project instead of just using the simple random generation. Pathis neighbor technique, buckshot algorithm, nearest neighbor technique, ranking algorithm and fractionation technique have been proposed. The random generator simply picks up random documents as the initial centroids. As this in farthest neighbor technique or the complete linkage technique, the farthest clusters or the clusters which are most far away from each other are placed together. In the buckshot algorithm, the hierarchical clustering techniques are combined along with the nearest neighbor technique. Here the single linkage is used in order to find the initial centroids. In the ranking technique, ranks are assigned to each of the documents and the and in fractionation algorithm, a recursive approach of forming buckets is used in order to finally attain our final clusters. In order to apply the algorithm, the initial centroids have been calculated and the K-medioids technique is now applied. The partitioning techniques that, that can be considered are K-means and K-medioids where our project concentrates on K-medioids. K-medioids has three different techniques that can be used, PAM, CLARA and Clarence, out of which we choose the PAM technique. In the typical K-medioids algorithm, that is the PAM algorithm, the do-while group is repeated until a positive value of shift is obtained. The following example can be seen as an effective example for K-medioids. Swapping costs should always become positive in order to stop the PAM clustering from happening. That is, the initial medioids are shifted from one cluster to another until a positive swapping cost is obtained. The main problem with PAM is, it is more robust than K-means, but it can lead to many number of swaps thus leading to effect, you know, less effective time complexity. This was our major project. Now, I would like to show you the execution of this project. Now, this is the front end for our project that we have created, where we, when we click on the browse button, the following matter appears, where we can choose our particular data set. Here, my data set is present. Now, before going to the front end, let me show you how to run this from the command prompt. My front end is stored in this Java file called mainframe.java, which I will now compile and run from, the, from our command prompt as follows. Yeah. Now that we can see, I have run the command pro from the command prompt and my uh, front end has opened up. Now I shall browse from my folder D where I have stored the data sets which are uh, already available. Now 
project files folder contains this classic data set which contains 800 documents which I shall choose for my initial clustering process. When I click on the tokenization button, the tokenization of text files happens. As we can see in the command prompt, the result has been displayed. Similarly, stop words and stemming will be applied. After this pre-processing step, we can click on the next button which will lead to the opening up of the next window of our front end. Either a TF or the IDF matrix can be selected. The TF matrix, we can see that the output.txt file has been created and in the IDF matrix, the IDF file.txt matrix has been considered. For now, I'll consider the TF matrix. I shall give the input number of classes as 4. Now, among these distance measures and initial centroid techniques, any one of them can be chosen. And when I, you can choose any one of those 4, I have chosen cosine and I can choose any one of these 6, I have chosen random generation. Now, when I hit start, and go into my command prompt, I can see that the four initial centroids by using random generation and cosine measure have been selected. Now, the k midoids algorithm will, be run, will run to n number of iterations until an effective number of clusters has been generated. Now, we can see that the iterations have started. The square brackets indicate the beginning and end of clusters in the k midoids algorithm. Now, as we can see, the iterations are going on. Yeah, at the end we can see that the accuracy of around 70.9% and an entropy of about 0.352 has been obtained by using this algorithm. Now, we can go back to our front end, choose any distance measure and initial centroid generation technique as per our requirement and run this project. So, this is the conclusion of our major project. I am highly thankful to our uh, project guide, Dr. N. Sandhya, the HOD of CSA department, who has inspired us to take up this project and come up with uh, so, so many different initial centroid generation techniques. Also, the, any questions would be welcome. Thank you for watching.